Hey guys, what's up? It's me again. I'm uh, I'm whispering because it's 12. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It's one o'clock in the morning almost. Uh, I have to stay up another hour to take the antibiotics because I forgot to take them earlier. Uh, but anyway, I want to show you my new gun. It's a uh, it's a Charter Arms uh, Pathfinder. Uh, so I've already unboxed this once, but I'm gonna do it again. This is my new primary carry gun. I'm going to put the gun aside for a second. Show you what it came with. Alright. came with two gun locks. Alright. Don't know why. Two sets of keys. The foam on this thing is kind of cheap, but it works. All Charter Arms revolvers have a lifetime warranty, by the way, guys. But it's not like Taurus. You actually have to pay the shipping, which sucks. Um, anyway, that's for the lifetime warranty. i got to fill that out. Okay. Uh, this is their um, accessories and apparel catalog. It shows you, like, grips and stuff like that in there. Holsters. Uh, just dropped something, but I don't think it's a big deal. They give you one of these, which is an oxymoron because they give you this. All Charter Arms. It gives you a free NRA membership, $1,000 firearm insurance, and it gives you a one year subscription to NRA free. A uh, free uh, magazine subscription for one year of your choice. And, uh, you know. Invitations to shot shows, etc. Okay, I'm gonna show you the uh, info. This is the spent shell. They give you this little patch you can put on your car if you wanted to. Youth Handgun Safety Act notice. And this is the uh, handgun booklet that it came with. And it also has all the parts listed here. It's like a blueprint. Uh, okay, I'm gonna put that away real fast. Put all this crap back. I'm gonna show you this too, what I paid for the gun, because I'm, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it's not the greatest, um, but anyway. So, let me start by showing you this. Alright, I paid 300 and fifty-five dollars for this gun. Uh, the gun retails in the state usually for four hundred dollars. In this state, guns are extremely expensive, guys. You have no idea. I'm sure that in other states it's even worse. I believe it. Um, but uh, in this state, Delaware, guns are expensive as hell. Um, so you really gotta count your dollars and pennies and stuff before you decide on what you're going to buy, which is why I chose this gun, and I wanted an American-made gun for my first gun. Um, now, there's other guns I'm going to get in the future that will not be American-made, I assure you that, but I wanted this gun to be American-made. Alright? And I could not, by any means, afford a Smith & Wesson. In this state, the cheaper models of Smith & Wesson cost between five fifty and $600, which is something uh, completely out of what I could afford for a gun. Alright? Now I'm going to safety check the gun. Heads up, it is loaded because I use this as a bed stand gun right now. And as a primary carry gun. There it is. Okay. You see how easily that ejected. Okay. When I first got this gun, everything was stiff on this gun. Uh, I needed solvent through the chamber and the barrel. And then on the injector rod, which now works like a champion. Alright. Charter Arms gets a bad rep, and for no really good reason, other than the fact that uh, a couple years back, the older owners of Charter, t Charter 2000, uh, Charter 2000 sucked. But the new guys that own it are not too bad, considering uh, everything overall. Um, I am pleased with the gun. I only had one complaint about the gun, we'll get to that. So this is the Charter Arms Pathfinder. It is chambered in the 22 Magnum, which yes, I know is a rimfire. 
I can't afford 9mm <laughs> and I can't afford 38s and we both know that those are the cheapest of the uh, center fires. I can't even afford them right now. So I stuck with something I could afford that has some oomph to it and believe it or not the 22 Magnum does offer that. Has penetration equal to the uh, 38 standard pressure. Okay, so I also want to point out that these grips are the old wood grips uh, from the original charter arms. They're no longer made. I got this off a of gun broker for like 10 bucks. All right, it's a two inch barrel, weighs 19 ounces. It's a double action, single action gun. Uh, I do not know if you can make this a double action only gun because it's a rim fire. It's the only rim fire out of all the models, so I don't know if they make a hammer for it. Um, and uh, the double action trigger pull is not that bad. Uh, if I go any farther, I will accidentally probably shoot it or uh, fire it. And I don't want to dry fire a, uh, a rim fire gun. Especially not <laughs> when it's my only gun right now. My only real reliable gun. I don't want to <laughs> mess it up. Okay, um, this is an American made gun. I'm proud for the fact that I support an American company. Um, everything about this gun is really uh, not too bad. It's a no frills gun, you know. And it can be used as a uh, reliable carry weapon. I also want to point out that the single action trigger pull is something I would never rely on in uh, in guns after seeing this. And it's because this is like a one pound trigger pull and I'm not even kidding you. I just touch it and it'll fire. So it's pretty scary stuff. I mean if I was really hell bent on making sure the guy did not grab that gun away from me, boom. But uh, that's pretty sloppy. Sights on this gun. Same as any other uh, snub nose revolver, which people complain about, but to me it's it's good enough. It's a small picture frame, so you get an accurate shot. Not a big deal. 22 Magnum will not kick that much, unlike the 38s and 30, 357s and the 44 Specials that they make. Uh, they're the only company I think that makes 44 Special. So Ugh, something to consider. Sorry, I had to crack my neck; it was killing me. Um. Everything else, you know, like I said, stiff out of the, um, that was my finger, by the way, I think. Let me just, there you go, so, thumb here. Um, everything was stiff when I first got it. As you can see, it's pretty, it's pretty good now. Everything is functioning just fine. Now, the big problem I had with this gun that really pissed me off, this. Going all the way here. That is not metal, people. That is plastic. And that really... <laughs> was like a ball buster when I got at him and realized it. Um, especially when I paid $355. Uh, you know, it doesn't sound like a lot of money to a lot of people, but to me, it's a lot of money. And, uh, for, pl you know, plastic being there kind of hurt me. Although, my dad pointed out the fact that the Ruger LCR and all these other guns are going to plastic and nylon and stuff like that now. This is actually a polymer or a nylon. I don't know exactly which one it is. I know it's got to be one of the two. Um, I, so. Uh, so it's a 19 ounce gun. But you know what? It really loaded and everything. I don't feel it at all when I sit down with this inside the waistband holster for it. Um, now, I only can still carry around my house and outside my backyard and stuff. Oh, and uh, that's about it because I don't have my permit. And like I said, I still use this as a bed stand gun. Um, and it serves its purpose. Remember when I talked to you guys about calibers? I told you I had my reasons for carrying what I carry, and you have yours. Well, this is. I have my reasons. I, I can't carry a, well, a big gun with me to my work. It is tight. Uh, everything is tight that I have to wear. So I have a tight polo shirt that I gotta wear, and tight black dress pants. <laughs> so, yeah. Now this is, like I said, a six-shot revolver. Um, and I do have two speed loaders for it, although speed loaders for the charters seem to be kind of awkward to use. If you look at it like this, see this right here? It, the grips. And these grips are actually smaller than the ones that they came with, which are like ugly-ass rubber grips that feel so cheap and uncomfortable. But get the wood grips for it, and it, it's not too bad. It really isn't... Um, it's not as well machined per se as a 
Smith and Wesson, but what really is? You know, you got your uh, Smith and Wessons, your Rugers, and your uh, what's the other one? Uh, Colts. Those three are like the top of the line. Charters, Taurus, and Rossi, and Arm Score or whatever. Uh, Cobras. They are not. Now, granted, I used all those names, but Charter is a cut above uh, Cobra and uh, Arm Score by a long shot. And I think it's on par with a Rossi. I want to say it's probably better than a Rossi as far as um, you not getting a lemon. <laughs> because I, I know that a lot more people get the lemons with the Rossis and the Taurus. And it bothered me so much that I don't even want to touch Taurus too much. I might get one or two guns down the road, but there's not too much I really want from them. I mean, I want their model 65 357 revolver. Um, I know I'll tell you that one, but that's about it. <laughs> um, maybe one of their PT-22s as a plinker, but nothing serious. Uh, look at looking at a Beretta Bobcat in 25. I think I said that before. I also want a... Uh, the next gun I'm saving up for will be a Beretta, because there's a Beretta I want. Um... And there's a reason why I wanted over the XDs, uh, because of the uh, capacity for the 40 caliber, because the XDs only hold a maximum of 12 rounds, which blows. Uh, while their 45 holds an extra round that the 40 doesn't, I don't know how that works, it, but whatever. Um, it's the P by four, the Beretta P by four. I held that. I think it's nice. Uh, 14 round magazine, 40 caliber, yeah, I'm digging one of those. Um, now other than that, back to this gun, <laughs> like I said, no frills, you know, if you don't have a lot of money, this gun is not a bad gun, it really isn't. Uh, people give, um, Charter Arms a bad rap, and Charter does not deserve that bad rap. Jeff Quinn talked me into buying one of these, and, you know, uh, after handling it, I don't regret it. You know, when I first got it home, I was like, son of a bitch. They ripped me off. I I had partially plastic for, for my gun, but, you know, it's not bad. And you're paying a little bit more because you're getting an American-made gun. The labor here is more expensive, guys. Just how it is. And I would rather support my nation over uh, Brazil. Uh, I'm not Brazilian. Uh, I have no one in my family that's in Brazil. So I don't care too much about Brazil's economy over uh, my, my nation's economy. Now... On the other hand, with the Beretta, I have plenty of family living in Italy, and I do sure as hell care about their well-being, and I am a proud Italian, so I wouldn't mind buying a Beretta. And I wouldn't mind buying a, um, a Bursa, because I have family in, uh, Argentina. Yeah, my family migrated all over the place, um, there's a reason for that. World War II story, and I'll talk about that in another video if you guys are interested, it's, uh pretty epic story <laughs> how my family was divided into two I don't want to tell you too much I, I think it'd probably be a cool subject to talk about and make people appreciate what they got just like I appreciate that I have this gun the right that I even have a charter arms which I'll be like oh it's not a very good quality gun and you know what I have to say they're wrong it's not the best quality no it's if I had to rate this gun on the quality level of 1 to 10, I'd give it a 7, maybe seven and a half. So, you get the idea. It's it's not bad, though. I would prefer to buy this over uh, some of the other revolvers out there. I'd definitely buy it over some of the more expensive Cobras. Definitely. I'm surprised Cobra's trying to sell their guns for $450. Bucks. Are, they, are they high or what? Because Smith & Wesson is only $100 more. I'd go with that any day. Um, it's just ridiculous. So... 350 for a brand new gun. It's an American made. Charter Arms Pathfinder. Their undercover is their uh, primary uh, selling gun. It's a 38. You can get that in uh, double action only or double single. Their uh, 357 Mag Pug, which I hear has some problems. But the uh, Bulldog model, the 44 Special, is still, I hear, a pretty epic gun, uh, all things considered. So. I hope this uh, helps you guys out. I'll probably make another video about this down the road, a better one. Uh, I had to take some painkillers, so I'm probably a little bit out of it. Sorry, I apologize. So, and uh, yeah, let me put this back in the uh, center waistband holster. Next to come will be my EDC. All right, guys, thank you.
Coming to the time limit. Take care. Bye.